Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe to the channel for regular content on ancient architecture as well as all of the latest news from the world of archaeology. The ancient pre-pottery Neolithic site of Gebekli Tepe is one of the true hot topics for those interested in archaeology and that's for a number of reasons. It has an incredible age with origins going all the way back to 11,500 years ago. The size of the site is also enormous and then you have the large amazing megalithic pillars and their associated relief carvings are breathtaking. And there is still so much more to Gebekli Tepe and if you want to learn more I have an entire playlist of videos. In this video I'm going to give you a short update on some new and very important discoveries, some of which could well change the way you view this ancient site. And then at the end of this video I'll also tell you about the work planned by archaeologists this year. And this is all thanks to a new video by Flint Dibble, where he interviews Dr Lee Clare, the excavation and research coordinator for the site and who works at the German Archaeological Institute. Flint's video is 1 hour and 20 minutes long and to hear all about Gebekli Tepe in depth by a man who's very much in the know, I would urge you all to watch it from start to finish. I've been researching the site myself for a number of years now and still I learned a great deal. In this video, I won't go through everything, of course but I've picked out a few key points related to the ancient architecture, so take this as a mere snippet of what you'll learn in Flint's full video. Before I get to the new information, I'll give you a brief overview of the site. Gebekli Tepe is a large pre-pottery Neolithic settlement and it was active for hundreds of years in the pre-pottery Neolithic A and B. At the heart of the excavation area inside a hollow, there are large oval special purpose structures, buildings with magnificent T-shaped pillars, some of which are anthropomorphic and some are decorated with wild animals. There is a clear narrative in the iconography showing a high level of sophistication for these settled hunter-gatherers. And yes, there is evidence of settlement. From the earliest phase of the site and right to the end, there were domestic structures surrounding the oval enclosures, structures in which people lived and worked. These structures were likely multi-tiered, having an upstairs and a down. It's important to note that Gebekli Tepe was like a permanent work in progress with both the special purpose and domestic structures showing multiple phases of renovation and remodeling over the hundreds of years of the settlement's life. Today, we see the site in its excavated state, it's how the enclosures looked when they went out of use and not how they started life, and this settlement was active for hundreds and hundreds of years. The ancient people were always reusing pillars, statues and artefacts, moving them around the site, taking them from the older enclosures and incorporating them into the new. Also, the iconography on the pillars was sometimes rubbed out and new motifs were made over the top. Over time, the monumental oval enclosures reduced in size as new internal walls were built with the pillars sometimes moving further in, acts of renovation to improve the strength and lifespan of the enclosures. Gebekli Tepe is very much a dynamic site and yes it is the work of hunter-gatherers and that's not a controversial claim, it's based on data. After almost 30 years of painstaking excavation, sieving the sediments and running them through flotation tanks, no domestic grains or domestic animal bones have ever been recovered. But wild varieties have, meaning that the people who lived here still hunted wild animals and cultivated wild crops. Desert kites, the effective hunting traps the ancient people set up, 
have also been found in the surrounding landscape right next to Gobekli Tepe and also Karahan Tepe. Originally, the site may well have had a more seasonal occupation, but certainly as time went by, experts believe that people lived here all year round. Serious work went into the homes, and stone artefacts like storage containers and grinding stones were too large for a mobile community. They were made on site and stayed on site, meaning the people likely did as well. Of course, the biggest attraction for many with an interest in Gebekli Tepe are the large oval enclosures, and that's because of the enormous megalithic pillars and also their exquisite decoration. Now, many have wondered about the nature of these structures, specifically whether or not they had a roof. And this is important, because some artists' impressions show these structures as open air, and there are a number of astronomical hypotheses that require them to have no roof. Now, I've always thought the T-pillars had a structural purpose, adding strength to their associated boundary walls, but also supporting a roof, hence why the two central pillars are taller. Sure, they likely had symbolic importance as well, hence their decoration, but first and foremost, I believe they were structural. Any roof would of course have been made from wood, but unless conditions are exceptional, wood does not survive 10 to 12,000 years. Well, I was surprised and happy to learn that Dr. Clare and the archaeologists at Gebekli Tepe have now discovered evidence of wooden beams in the fill of Enclosure D. Just above the floor of this building, they found the negatives of wooden beams. The beams were a few meters long and they were also crossed, which is what we'd expect with roof beams. So it looks like the roof collapsed into the enclosure becoming part of the rubble fill, and then, over time, the wood rots and disappears, leaving the negative in the rubble, so we can see it even though it's not there. And that's why painstaking and meticulous excavation is so important. If the experts just went in with a JCB and took out all of the rubble in a hurry, we would never have found any evidence of wooden beams. The mystery over whether or not the structures had a roof would be unsolvable, but now we have some hard evidence. Which brings us nicely to the famous Pillar 43 of Enclosure D, and the three so-called handbags that are carved in relief at the top of the pillar. Now, one hypothesis for this imagery is that we're actually looking at three man-made structures in cross-section and the dome on top is the roof. I have a video on this hypothesis, and I've linked it below in the description. But of course it is just a hypothesis, but if we go with it just for a minute, some think they might be showing us three of the large oval enclosures. Of course it was always debated whether or not these structures had a roof, but with the new finding of the wooden beams and the fill of Enclosure D, this now looks more and more likely. There are a number of artists' impressions out there already for how the structures may have looked with a roof, so maybe the three carvings on Pillar 43 could be depicting the oval enclosures. Interestingly, in the new interview with Dr. Clare on Flint Dibble's channel, he tells us about another fascinating discovery at Gebekli Tepe which could also be what these so-called handbags are portraying. In the northwestern part of the site, in an area that's not yet open to the public, a large deep pit, maybe a cistern, was discovered. It has a diameter of 8 metres and a depth of 3. On the edge of the pit, on its rim, there are 3 or 4 courses of corbelled roofing. This may indicate an entire corbelled roof, and this could also explain the rounded shape of the so-called handbags. Maybe they're cisterns or were built for some kind of storage. Leon Flint also discussed the burial of the oval enclosures, 
which, as I've stated more than once over the past few years, is no longer believed to be a deliberate act. For many years, it was believed that these oval enclosures, which are situated in a low point of the site, in a kind of hollow, were decommissioned and then deliberately backfilled and buried. But from reanalyzing the fills of enclosures B, C and D, Dr. Clare and his colleagues now believe that this is unlikely, and this is new research from the past two years. When we look at a cross section of the site, we can see that there is a very steep slope with the special purpose oval buildings at the bottom, and the domestic settlement higher up and surrounding them. Erosion and slope slides cause material to fall downhill, and even today there are problems with erosion at the site. The experts have also found evidence of terraced walls, built in the pre-pottery Neolithic, and to hold back the sediment, rubble and waste from creeping down the hill. But on more than one occasion, perhaps after some heavy rain and or an earthquake, the slopes did give way, and we find evidence of slope slides into the enclosures. The roof of each enclosure that was in the firing line would have been demolished from the weight of the material from higher up. It's also worth noting that when Gebekli Tepe was an active settlement, the climate was wetter than it is today. The key takeaway then is that the natural explanation for the fill of the enclosures explains the clear sloping stratigraphy we see inside them, and it also explains the jumbled nature of the finds in the fill. The animal bones recovered from the fill could be from refuse pits located higher up. Human bones have also been found in the enclosures, and these could be from burials from higher up all of which avalanched down the slope, churning up a variety of artefacts and depositing them accordingly. This picture provided by Dr. Clare is a fantastic artist's impression of the oval enclosures, with the domestic structures around the edge on higher ground. And here's another after the natural destruction from slope slides. And here's another. These are a fantastic visual representation of the site's destruction from natural causes, probably triggered by heavy rains and or earthquakes. Of course, these slope slide events would have happened when Gebekli Tepe was populated and still active, and the experts have also found trampled areas, like walkways that emerged during the interim periods between slope slide events. Therefore, even though they were partially destroyed and filled in, maybe to some extent they were still being used. Maybe ritually. Of course, we don't know how and why with any kind of certainty. Dr. Clare gave us a fascinating and up-to-date insight into Gebekli Tepe. I've just presented a couple of the key points, of which there are many, so I would urge you to watch the video in full. Dr. Clare ends his discussion with Flint by talking about what's taking place this year, in 2024. Right now, the team of excavators are back in the heart of the site, inside Enclosure B, excavating the building, carefully analysing the stratigraphy of the fill that's still in situ. They're making the enclosure more visible to the public, and of course, after that, the important conservation work needs to be done. Remember, these buildings have been buried for thousands and thousands of years, and so, with the sudden and now permanent exposure to the elements, means the site requires conservation, so it's protected and preserved for years to come. You can find some videos on social media showing this work in action, and in the description below, I'll leave some links to some social media channels you can follow for updates. This year, the experts are also looking at the archaeology that was carefully removed when the legs of the roof were anchored to the bedrock a few years ago. It was carefully extracted and documented, but now it needs to be analysed. In 2024, 
Gebekli Tepe is so much more than a mere excavation site. It is of course open to the public. Thousands of tourists flock every year, as do documentary filmmakers. It is a hive of activity, and of course many people want to talk with those that are working at the site to share their ideas or hear about the latest discoveries and developments from those with the hands-on experience. It seems that even though I try and read everything written about Gebekli Tepe, there is always something new to learn. Dr. Clare also has a brand new paper he's just released, which I've linked below in the description, and of course we also have the new full interview with Dr. Clare on Flint Dibble's channel, also linked below. Gebekli Tepe is a site that keeps on giving, and I can't wait to find out what's next to be uncovered. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.